Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is day 641 of our three-year journey through the Word of God, and we are in the book of Nehemiah, and we come to Nehemiah chapter 6, and we saw this pattern where in chapter 3, there was great progress made. In chapter 4, there was opposition. Chapter 5, there was great progress made on moral reform and justice. And then in chapter 6, now there is opposition. God's work never goes forward without opposition from the enemy. That is to be expected. That is the regular pattern of how God's kingdom grows and advances in this world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for the time that we get to spend in your word each day. Thank you for this chapter here in Nehemiah and for all that it teaches us about you, about your work, about the nature of what it means to belong to your kingdom, about what it means to be faithful to you. We pray that you would make us more faithful kingdom servants and more willing and eager subjects of King Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. All right, Nehemiah chapter 6. Now when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left in it, although to that time I had not set up the doors in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come and let us meet together at Hakafirim in the plain of Ono. But they intended to do me harm. And I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? And they sent to me four times in this way, and I answered them in the same manner. In the same way, Sanballat, for the fifth time, sent his servant with me, to me, sorry, sent his servant to me with an open letter in his hand. And it was written, it is reported among the nations, and Geshem also says it, that you and the Jews intend to rebel. That is why you are building the wall. And according to these reports, you wish to become their king. And you have also set up prophets to proclaim you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. And now the king will hear of these reports. So now come, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent to him, saying, no such thing as you are saying has been done. For you are inventing them out of your own mind. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking their hands will drop from the work and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. Now, when I went into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delea, the son of Mahatabel, who was confined to his home. He said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. They are coming to kill you by night. But I said, Should such a man as I run away? And what man such as I could go into the temple and live? I will not go in. And I understood and saw that God had not sent him but he had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Senballat had hired him. For this purpose he was hired, that I should be afraid and act in this way and sin, and so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember, Tobiah and Senballat, O oh my God, according to these things that they did, and also the, prophet, the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month Elul in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem, for they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and Tobiah's letters came to them. For many in Judah were bound by oath to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Era, and his son, Jehonanan, had taken the daughter of Meshullam, the son of Berechiah, as his wife. 
Also they spoke of his good deeds in my presence, and reported my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to make me afraid. Hmm. Well, that is Nehemiah chapter 6. And what a wonderful chapter of how faithfulness to the work of God, perseverance in the calling of God, ignoring distractions and deceptions that would draw us away from God, leads to the work of God being finished. And that is uh, just a great example. This is something that we all need to learn from and benefit from because there is work to be done in God's kingdom. There are people who need to hear the gospel. There are nations that need to be reached. There are churches that need to be planted. There are pastors that need to be trained. There is a church building that needs to be built. There are uh, ministries to our community that, that need to, to be happening. There's the preaching of the word. There's the worship of God's people. There's the discipling of the next generation that's rising up. There is work to be done in the kingdom of God. And if you are a Christian, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you belong to the kingdom of God, and you are called to that work. You are called to kingdom work. You might be an accountant. You might be a salesman. You might be a plumber or a pipe fitter. You might be a carpenter, or you might be a teacher, or a lawyer, or a police officer, or you might be serving in the military. Whatever your, your vocation is, you also have kingdom work to be done. You are called to be a witness and a light to your co-workers and to your family and to your neighbors. So we all have circles of influence where we are called to be witnessing and telling people about Jesus Christ as we have ability. We are to pray for the salvation of lost loved ones. We are to look for opportunities to share the gospel with co-workers and neighbors and family members. But you're also to be an active member of your local church actively supporting the worship and work of the church to the best of your ability. That means making it your highest priority every week to show up on the Lord's Day and worship together with God's people, coming in early if you're at Forest Hill, coming in early to help set up, staying afterwards to help tear down, being a part of the fellowship so that you can welcome people. If you see a visitor at church or someone you don't know, go up and welcome them. Take the initiative to extend hospitality to them. Host Bible studies in your home. Make sure you attend Bible studies that are being offered where you can contribute and you can grow and you can help others grow. Be a part of the work that God is doing. Give toward missions. Pray for our missionaries. Serve in whatever way God has gifted you to serve because there is work to be done. And we saw this in earlier chapters where everybody had their job and everybody had their place. But... The work of God never goes forward without opposition. And the opposition here comes in many different forms. There's distraction. Come and meet with us. Come and meet with us. Now, this is a deceptive distraction because it's meant to destroy Nehemiah because they can see that he is faithfully and boldly leading this work. And so they want to kill him. They want to destroy him. They need to get him away from Jerusalem, off into an isolated place where they can get away with doing him harm. And that is, he doesn't give in to that. There's also fear tactics that are used. You know, we're going to send letters to the king. And we're going to say that you're building the wall because the Jewish people want to rebel against the king of Persia. And they want to make you their king. And you've even hired some prophets for hire. Maybe these guys know something about prophets for hire because they had their own, who are referenced later in the chapter of their own spin doctors, right, who uh, sell their propaganda. And so maybe they assume if that's what we're doing, that must be what Nehemiah is doing too. So, many, so oftentimes you'll see that in opposition to the work. People who are really doing something that is scheming and underhanded and unethical and shady, they accuse you of doing the same thing because that's actually what they're doing. And so that's, you know, but it's a fear tactic. So there's a dis distraction Come away from the work. Come over here. We need to talk about this. That is really a deception to harm. And then there is, there's fear tactics. And then um, there's just this direct threat that comes. It's an empty threat, right? Verse 10. Now, when I went into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deleah, the son of Mahatabel, 
who was confined to his home, he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. They are coming to kill you by night. Now that's a lie. But it is a sort of direct threat that says, if we don't go, if we don't run and hide, right? But why? Why would they want to do that? Well, verse 13 tells us why they want to do that. For this purpose he was hired, that I should be afraid and act in this way and sin, and so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. See, Nehemiah is a coward. He runs into the temple and hides. You can't really trust him to stand if the day of battle actually comes. He's not a trustworthy leader. So it's a setup to be able to smear his name. So gossip and slander, as well as deception and threats, all come against the work of God. And yet, I love in verse 9, they all wanted to frighten us, thinking their hands will drop from the work and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. The more Nehemiah knows that there's opposition, hoping that his hands will drop, that he will give up, he prays all the more. He prays. He responds to the opposition to God's word, to God's work by praying. God's word is a God's work is opposed. He prays. Strengthen my hands. And then we get the good news report in verse 15. The wall was finished on the 25th day of the month of Elul in 52 days. 52 days to rebuild a city wall around the city of Jerusalem. That is getting some quick work done. And um, it's been six months since Nehemiah first went in and spoke to the king because it's Elul, which is the sixth month. And he went in to speak to the king on the first month. So within six months time from the time he first went in and talked to the king until now, and actually 52 days or just under two months of actual work that's being done on the wall, that is making some quick work. And that's because there's a determination to do the work of God and to do it faithfully and to do it with perseverance. And he gives us a little bit of an explanation. We'll get more information about Tobiah and Senballat later because they're not going away. But here we get a little bit of uh, information because you might be thinking at this point, how is this Tobiah character so powerful and influential? Nehemiah is obviously a man of integrity, a godly leader. Why can't he just get rid of this Tobiah? Why can't he have him arrested and whatever? Well, because Tobiah is well connected with wealthy people and who think he's great and who say great things about him. And that makes it tricky. That makes it tricky when someone who is well thought of, highly esteemed within the community of God's people is part of the opposition party, part of the one who's, you know, distracting and deceiving and spreading lies and things like that. And that makes it, that makes it difficult. So Nehemiah doesn't just act hastily and have Tobiah arrested. He's, he's going to have to remain persevering and trust God to take care of these things. Well, we are following King Jesus, and he is the king worth following, even more so than Nehemiah. He's the one who ultimately is in charge of the construction project. He said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. So King Jesus is the great king who is building his church. We are the laborers, the laborers for the vineyard. We are the laborers along the wall. We are called to do our little part, shape a stone, put it in place, plant a seed, Weed, weed the field, whatever that, you know, metaphor you want to use. We're called to do our part faithfully. And we need to be aware of deception and distraction and slander and gossip and attack. Some of it comes from the world. Some of it comes from within God's own people. We need to be on our guard. We need to pray all the more. And we need to persevere in faithfulness in the work of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you are faithful. And because of your unfailing faithfulness, we can be faithful by your grace and for your glory. So help us toward that end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that is Nehemiah chapter 6. Thanks for joining me. Have a blessed day in the Lord.